Hi everybody, it's uh, great to speak to you uh, once again and uh, it just feels every day that every day seems a bit longer than all the other days. Uh, I'm going to ask Joe now to turn off my phone which would be really good. Uh, I just want to say a massive thank you to the guys who uh, did the work uh, in the prayer meeting. Uh, Claire and Joe thought that they were both so good that I should stop doing prayer meetings now and it should be Will and <laughs> Tom doing it forever. So that was uh, that's really encouraging. So, <laughs> which is great. The other thing was a lot of you have asked, could you see Joe now? Because I said that comment a couple of days ago. So I'm going to ask Joe to come along and say hello. He's done his hair. It's all very good. You want to say hello, Joe? They can't see your face. You need to come closer. There we are. You still need to come. There we are. That's brilliant. That's great. Thank you, Joe. That's fantastic. <laughs> and uh, it's just been great to hear of prayer requests. If I can encourage you to keep praying for the members of the church who are working in the NHS and also for other workers that are serving us at this time. Uh, I think this is so important. Question is, when we're in isolation, how are we supposed to cope? We often think the problem is the circumstances around us. We think that the real issue is if things changed, everything would be okay. But the Bible is clear that's not where the battle is, and that's not a battle we control. The real battle is how we see circumstances, how we see life. It's the battle, really, if I could put it this way, of the imagination, of how you perceive circumstances. Paul puts it this way in Corinthians, the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of this world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every imagination that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. In our minds, we can think nobody cares. In our minds, we can set up strongholds where we think God's got no plans for us. Our sins are more serious than everybody else's. They can never change. Things will make us happy if things change. But the Bible teaches the problem is the problem of the mind. And what we need is to demolish the arguments and the lies of the evil one whose only purpose is to steal our life and this moment from us and to murder us. His intention is to get us to believe lies. And you see this over and over again in the Bible. Similar set thing is said in Ephesians chapter 4. So I insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of where? Their thinking. It's the thinking is where the problem is. In fact, it seems to me the Sermon on the Mount shows there has never been a sin which we haven't imagined and thought of first, believed a lie. That's why Jesus says, doesn't he, in the Sermon on the Mount, about hatred. If you've ever hated someone, that is murder. It is the root of murder. Adultery has to be committed first in the mind. All sin has to start in the mind. So if we're to stay sane at this time, we have to win the battle of the mind. The battle of the imagination. We have to realise that sometimes, or most times, the way we see the world is not true. We're not useless. We're not forgotten. We're not unforgiven. I don't know how many times I've heard sermons or someone has shared in RBTs where I had a stronghold, a thought of how the world was, and then I heard what God's word said, the truth of the Bible, and I realised that my imagination, how I was seeing everything, was wrong. Some sin I thought I could never stop. Some sin I thought could ne I could never be forgiven of. Some situation where I felt that God didn't care with me and he just barely tolerated me and then someone shared God's word and there was a war between how I imagined the world 
how Satan had captured my thoughts and my imagination. And then the word of God would come and tear down the stronghold and capture it for Christ. That's what meditation is. It's thinking about what the Bible says instead of thinking what we say. Martin Lloyd-Jones, the great preacher, describes it as this. It's the first sign of sanity to talk to yourself. Tell yourself the truth. So when you're on your own and you think the situation is hopeless, that's not true. Jesus is on the throne. He rules all things. If you feel God's got no purpose or plan for your life, that's not true. God has called you and given the truth to you. So do not lose that war. The war of the imagination of your heart. Talk to yourself for the truth. We don't know. We don't understand. And our hearts are sinful. So let us listen to the word of Christ. Share RBTs together. Read what is being said. Listen to Christians giving good advice. Listen to his word. And then we will be able to stand against the evil one. And when this bombardment of thoughts come, when the day of evil comes, we will stand and we will win because Christ is ours and he will not fail. He has already won when he rose from the dead, victorious over sin and Satan and death. May God keep you. I love you. Jesus loves you. Jesus died for you. God bless you. Hopefully speak to you tomorrow.